Hey y'all, what's up? So we're about to hop into the vlog that we have for you guys today, but first we wanted to make an announcement. So I was just hopping. I just, when you say hopping, I just wanna hop. <laughs> All right, well, what are you talking about? Oh, that's right. We have just launched two new t-shirt designs. I wanna <clears> give a <throat> tiny bit of backstory to that. Uh, several months ago, we decided to shift from the merch printer that we were using, which did it on a really large scale, to a local business that used sustainably sourced t-shirts. The sacrifice of that is that we do limited edition t-shirt runs now rather than always having all designs available at all the time. So right now we have two new designs that are going to be released. They're gonna be available for the month of September. And I think that they're really awesome. One design I think is probably the, one of the best designs we've ever had of any shirt I ever. think they're both pretty awesome. So I came up with One these. of the shirts I do not believe. <laughs> okay. So I cannot promote that okay, shirt as that's a good fair. shirt. So what I did was made some rudimentary sketches of what I was envisioning, sent them over to B Unlimited, which is the t-shirt designer that we work with, the provider that we work with, and they sent back these beautiful, beautiful t-shirts that they had an artist draw out. They're amazing. The first one, it, Jeremiah can't get behind, it says tomatoes are better than dinner. The back story of that shirt is that Benjamin and I were in the garden one night totally ruining our appetite for dinner on eating tomatoes. And I told him, Ben, we need to go inside and make some dinner. And he said, tomatoes are better than dinner. And I personally completely agree. So we've got that shirt to kind of commemorate uh, summertime and how many nights we spend in the garden eating tomatoes instead of dinner. And the next shirt, the next shirt, um, another little quote from the vlog uh, is, real food comes dirty. I think this is so beautiful. They've done such a good job of both of these. But uh, real food comes dirty is kind of something that I've said for a long time because when new gardeners get into gardening, uh, one of the big mindsets that we kind of have to overcome is that mindset that we have from getting all our food at the grocery store where it's all pristine and uniform and then you start gardening and you're like well this is really different because real food comes dirty sometimes it has bugs on it and uh so i personally love the idea of gardeners all over wearing both of these shirts because they are conversation starters um the whole real food comes dirty idea and i just imagine wearing that at the grocery store chatting with the cashier and really getting the conversation back to gardening, which is what I like to do anytime given the opportunity to conversate with a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> so we will put the links for these down below. They're available through the month of September. We should have a couple in hand soon that we will be wearing and showing you guys. Yep. Um, but yeah, let's watch the vlog. We grew a lot of onions this year. I don't know exactly how many we harvested. I didn't count them, but it was a lot. And we're now in September down to the very end of what we grew. So I'm keeping that in mind next year. I'm going to grow a lot more onions and garlic and try to grow enough for the year for fresh eating and then stuff that will store well. And then also um, stuff that we can have enough to dehydrate or freeze dry and make our own garlic and onion powders. We didn't have enough to do that this year. I just went down to get these for this recipe and I think we have like maybe 15 onions left. So I'm in the kitchen today. Um, woke up to crazy thunderstorm and right now the sun has sort of come out and it has stopped storming for a little while, but according to the weather radar, it's gonna start back up in about an hour. So right now, um, everybody ran outside to feed the animals and I'm making some brunch. And I figured I would shoot this video because you guys asked me for it when I mentioned this the other day when we're harvesting sweet potatoes. Uh, this is, I'm making sweet potato hash and I'm just gonna tell you the basics of what I do. I'll write this out in the description down below. I'm not, I don't feel very good at sharing recipes because I don't measure anything. So this is a roundabout and I uh, encourage you to tweak it and make it your own. Here I have about five sweet potatoes and four apples that are cut up, diced up. You can see the size of this. That's preference. You could make it smaller if you wanted. I think bigger and it would take a while to cook, but 
Um, so these are all diced up and mixed together. And I've got some bacon from um, hogs that we raised. And I've just diced that up and cooked it. And here in this pan is just a tiny bit of that bacon grease and coconut oil. And here I have one large onion that I've diced. I turned the heat off of this. I had to stop for a second, but I don't want it to be burnt. So the first thing I do is put the heat on like medium low, and I put the sweet potatoes and the apples in together, and I'm gonna cook these. Um, my pan was already hot. I know I just turned the heat on, but I had just turned it off a minute ago because it was getting too hot. Uh, you want to put these in a hot pan with hot oil. Whenever you're trying to brown something and give it like a good crispy out coating, you make sure your pan's hot when you put it on. Otherwise, it'll soak up that oil and it'll just be greasy. Okay, so that looks like a lot, but it'll cook down. Um, and this takes a while, so I'm actually going to show you guys around with some other things. Now, the onions, I put these in a little while later because I don't like them to get burnt. You can, if you want, like brown your onions down first and kind of caramelize them a little bit and then take them out and do this. That's just preference. And with the bacon, like I brown it first so I can use a little bit of grease. You can also cook that in the oven or you can leave it out. If you are not a meat eater, uh, this recipe is still good without meat in it. So obviously I'm making a ton of this. Um, if you're not cooking for a lot of people, you don't have to cook this much. I think that if you're just doing this for like a smaller family, um, probably three medium sweet potatoes and two apples and a small onion would be a good ratio. I'm just gonna let that cook and show you guys some other stuff that's going on in the kitchen. First, look at this. How exciting. This spring, we ordered a lot of new chicks from Murray McMurray Hatchery. And some of them were a breed that I was the most excited about. It's, um, they're white marrons. And in the past, I had French black copper marrons and they lay like a dark chocolate colored egg. And Murray McMurray has a line of white marrons that they have bred. And they're really beautiful. And when I got to go visit Iowa and visit the hatchery, Let's see, it was the very beginning of March. I got to see the eggs that they laid and they were so dark and so pretty, it made me really excited. So I've been anxiously awaiting my birds to start laying and this egg came in yesterday. And this is, this is Moran's egg. You can tell because it's so much darker. Like here's a regular brown egg. It's a little fairy egg. So a lot of times when chickens first start laying, they have not really worked out the system yet. And so a lot of times they'll lay really weird eggs at first. They'll be really small, you know, kind of misshapen. Sadly, sometimes you'll see like a little bit of blood on the egg. They're just getting used to laying and this regulates. It won't always be this small. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a yolk in this or not. Um, sometimes little fairy eggs will have a tiny little yolk in them. It's just white that's in there because they're just working out their system. But the fact that we got that tells me that we're gonna have a really pretty egg basket really soon. And I'm very excited about that. Next step in the show and tell are these pears. Now these came off of our pear tree. Um, you guys gave me the advice to go ahead and pick them hard and let them get soft on the counter and that has happened. Now they're not super soft, but they're soft enough that I feel like I can cut into them. So we're actually gonna go ahead and harvest the rest of the pears off the tree today as long as we can get a break in the rain. Here I have some tomato seeds that I saved. Um, these are dry, they're ready to go into bags. After soaking these to ferment off the gel, I laid them out on these paper towels and now I get to just bag them up. So here's a handful of different kinds of tomatoes that I'll be growing next year. And the pears, my plan for these, I don't know what variety this is. This is an older pear tree. It was very well established and big when we moved here. We didn't even find it for a few years. And the skin is really rough. Um, and several people piped up and said that this is kind of like a storage pear or winter pear that are really made more for putting up and storing. And so what my plan is for these, probably most all of the pears that come off of that tree, is I'm gonna peel them and cut them up and put them in the crock pot and make some sort of pear butter. I don't really have a recipe for that. That's my plan for the pears. I don't know, I guess it probably depends on how many we get off the tree. If we end up with a whole bunch more, I might have to find something else to do with them. All right, I added the onions here, and 
I'm hesitant to tell you exactly how long you're gonna have to cook this. I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, it takes mine a lot longer because I'm cooking a lot. Like this is a really big pan. But I put the onions in about five minutes ago. This has been going for about 25 minutes total, maybe 30. And I'm gonna let it go a little while longer. Basically what I'm looking for now is for these sweet potatoes to soften up and get kicked through. And they're getting pretty close. And if you'll notice, I've got some kind of like brown sides on here. I, just, I don't stir it constantly. I just kind of like flatten it out and let those sides get brown and then flip it all over. And when you do this, this is causing all of those to steam and uh, soften up. All right, we're gonna head down to the garden and get some rosemary for my sweet potato hash. It is so gross outside right now. Kind of a rundown on what our weather's been doing the last few days, of course, the Hurricanes, tropical storms came up through the Gulf and they moved up through the country and just dumped a lot of rain on us, a lot of high winds. And basically the day that the actual eye wall of Laura pushed through here, we got a little bit of wind damage. We had a tree fall in our woods. Um, no, nobody was hurt, none of the animals were hurt. We had them all locked up in their barns because we wanted to make sure that they weren't under any falling branches. And, you know, there's just, there, it made kind of a mess, but thankfully, no real damage. Uh, but since then, it has rained nonstop. So now we're getting a lot of flooding in our area. And like, it stormed all morning. It briefly stopped. It's 100% humidity out here right now and about 90 degrees. So it literally, it feels like a sauna out here. And I'm curious to see how much rain we've got. And I'm gonna check the rain gauges down in the garden. I accidentally turned my microphone off here, but I'm showing you that we got eight inches of rain and also that the wind from the hurricane storm tore my banana plants up pretty well. They're kind of shredded here, as you can see, and broken, but we checked the other rain gauge and confirmed that, yeah, it was actually eight inches of rain, which is crazy. That's a lot of rain. I just realized my microphone wasn't on. Oh well. Hope you enjoyed that voiceover you just watched. So on a week where we get over eight inches of rain, it does make for some happy waterfowl. Look at all the ducks and geese. <laughs> Here I got a handful of rosemary for my sweet potato hash. Being down in the garden and seeing what a mess it is because all this rain it has just exploded the weeds, a lot of plants that are just sick and um, really dying. And got a lot of stuff that's just laid over. The, when the hurricane, which it was a tropical storm when it got to us, came, it laid down all my sunflowers and corn. And frankly, I'm just not going to try to make a list of what to do about this right now uh, because we still have about three more days of storm. So we'll do the rescue mission of the garden after all the storms have passed. <laughs> all right, I turned the heat off of this when I went down to the garden so that I would not forget I've been distracted in the garden before while the food cooked. <laughs> it's never a good thing. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. Now I got rosemary for this sweet potato hash. You can also use thyme in it and that also works too. Um, but I like rosemary because with the sweet potatoes, it tastes like Thanksgiving. So I like that. So I guess this is a couple of tablespoons of chopped fresh rosemary in my big old pan. So you could do less if you weren't cooking as much. Now, as far as like salt and pepper go with this, that's gonna be to taste. Um, if you are using bacon, keep that in mind before you salt this a bunch because that bacon is salty, especially if you used any of the grease to cook this in. Uh, so I usually kind of wait till the end to add much salt since it already has it from that. And here at the end, whenever everything is good and soft, I go ahead and mix the bacon back in. All right, so there's this hash and I'm gonna show you how we serve this. So you get one more little kitchen trick today. The way that we eat sweet potato hash is with a fried egg on top, or a couple of fried eggs on top. And um, that's runny oak, fried eggs. This is fine by itself. You don't have to put fried eggs on it, but I mean, it really is good if you do it that way. And I've got my little cast iron pan. This is my egg pan. 
we say it has the the egg magic or the potato magic but it's super super seasoned um, I've had it for a good long while so I'm gonna put the heat underneath this pan and I'm going to put maybe like a half a tablespoon of butter in here and melt it over medium heat and I want to let that get good and hot. I don't want to burn my butter, but I do want to let it get good and hot. Now, I really love fried eggs, but the only fried eggs I'd ever eaten until I was an adult were like greasy fried, like lots of butter or grease and um, all of it kind of spooned over the top. And while that does taste good, it doesn't leave me feeling super great. So I learned this way to fry an egg several years ago and I've been doing it like this since then. So I'm gonna get my oil, my butter, hot in my pan. I've got a fresh egg from our chickens and I need a lid and some water. All right, I'm gonna do my best to film this. Okay, I'm gonna drop this in. I'm gonna wait about 30 seconds. And in this 30 seconds, what's gonna happen is the white is going to set up in this egg because I personally, I like my yolks really runny, but I like the whites of my egg to be firm. I don't want that to be runny. Okay, now that that's set up, I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of water in the pan and cover it. Find the lid that fits better, but this one should work okay. I have to press it down because it's not exactly flush. And what this is gonna do is all of that steam is gonna get trapped underneath this lid and that is going to cook the top of my egg. Um, and I don't have to use a ton of grease. This, this cooks it by the steam. This takes about another 30 seconds to a minute. You wanna keep an eye on it. Kinda depends on how hot your stove is. Wait, some hash on there. And then now on top of this, some pepper and some salt. Now this is the best with some like kale microgreens on top of it, but I don't have any right now. But I got this runny oak and the sweet potato hash. And this my friends is a staple in our house and it's so good. so good. I just edited the video that you just watched and realized I did not sign off. Thank you for hanging out with me in the kitchen today. I really just love food and I love sharing it with you. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.